So today we are very excited to welcome Stami Paul. Stami is an executive human resources leader with more than 20 years of human resource strategy and change management experience across various industries of domestic and global responsibilities. She is currently the division vice president, human resources for air gas, providing human resource leadership for the North division, covering a territory that spans across several states and thousands of associates. She is an accomplished change agent who prides herself on bu building innovative teams and solutions that effectively drive change and results in the business. As such, her entrepreneurial idea making created the concept and organization Graffiti Heart in 2013, and she serves as the founder and president. Graffiti Heart offers a platform for graffiti writers and aspiring artists to practice their artistic talent on a stage that promotes approved commission projects and beautifies and revi revitalizes communities while funding educational opportunities for underserved youth. Stami holds a Bachelor's of Arts degree from Kent State University and a Master's of Business from Baldwin Wallace University. Stami also serves as the board chair for University Hospital Richmond and Bedford, Heid Bedford Regional Hospitals, is on the advisory board of the Cleveland Institute of Art, and is on the Cleveland City Planning Commission board. And she is a member of our Leadership Cleveland class of 2020. Please welcome Stami. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So, so glad to see all these uh, familiar and new faces. So I'm gonna share my screen. Can you see my screen? All right, so um, thanks for the kind introduction, Rachel. And um, I appreciate everybody taking part of their lunch hour for those that take lunch or that get time to take lunch um, to, to be on today's um, update or topic about Graffiti Heart. Um, I have an update too, because as of Monday, I start my new job. Uh, it's still with Air Gas, but uh, as a senior vice president of Air Gas. So um, that'll, that'll make change for, um, obviously for me, Graffiti Heart will continue. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so as Rachel mentioned, I'm gonna give a little background to Graffiti Heart. I'll go through it just so that you kind of get a, a good, maybe 30,000 foot view of organization and get a little bit more semblance of what, what our organization is about, our purpose. Um, you know, as Rachel said, we started in 2013. I was actually going through a change in my career from uh, one company to the next. I used to be the executive director of HR for Benvenu Laboratories, which is part of Beringer Ingelheim. And uh, I joined there uh, given a burning platform they had around survival of their business, um, given some regulatory issues. So about seven, eight years later, we decided to sell the existing product line uh, uh, in order to really salvage uh, some of the really critical care products that they manufactured. And so during that time um, is when I came up with the concept of Graffiti Heart um, I had a passion and have had a passion around uh, urban art, especially the illegal graffiti um, that has really been an impetus of, of art culture, especially um, stemming from New York City and then Los Angeles uh, back in the 70s, 60s, 60s and 70s and such. And, and so I, I, I had tried to find a graffiti artist that could do piece in my house in Tremont uh, back in about 2011 and had a really difficult time finding somebody Everybody seemed to know one, but nobody would come up above the ground to, to do something uh, commission. And I ended up getting connected with an artist in, in New York. And I thought, well, why can't we leverage the artists we have here and, and, and provide a platform um, so that it can be a more, more of a um, uh, credible art form and appreciate art form and for the artists as well. So long story short, um, I was on an airplane flying from, I think, uh, Connecticut and doodling on a napkin with some names, with some concepts uh, and some drawings and, and fast forward, that's where the Graffiti Heart logo, the name Graffiti Heart came about. Uh, and I basically uh, hired one of our graffiti writers to design the logo based on my really bad concept drawings. So um, that was 2013 when uh, we got it uh, incorporated and then uh, formed the board. So we had our first board meeting in April of 2013, um, I'm sorry, 14. And, and granted, I have never been a part of a nonprofit, had knew nothing about nonprofit because initially I was thinking, do I, do I start this concept as a for-profit and get out of human resources altogether? But um, I obviously uh, 
put too many stakes in the ground with, with some commitments uh, financially. So I had to really continue on my HR career. And I decided, well, why don't I do this on the side as a passion project so that all the proceeds, other than uh, minimal operating expenses, all the proceeds go back to the community um, through art education and through um, really coloring the world, coloring the neighborhoods and brightening up uh, and revitalizing communities. So um, we got our first invite to do something uh, community oriented and, and um, uh, for, the, for, the, for the really public when the International Gay Games came to Cleveland. Um, that was in 2014, it was in August. Uh, you know, People from all over the world came to visit Cleveland for this particular event. And we were the only art, live art installation uh, for that event. So we got some wonderful donations and we had some wonderful volunteers and built significant size uh, wood walls throughout Mall C, downtown Cleveland. And for a period of about seven days, we had specific artists come from all over Northeast Ohio and really um, just freelance and free, uh, you know, do, do just um, create whatever they wanted to do. Um, and it, it was a diversity of, of artists and a diversity of, of pieces. And we have most of those still. Um, we received donations for a couple of those, but we still have some of those installations um, at our building. So that really was our first um, uh, really experiment on the map. And then after that, uh, the artists that I initially connected with uh, years prior uh, for a piece in my house, who actually gave me a referral to somebody local, um, is Vic Fing, who's with the greetings tour. And so he was looking for an opportunity to bring one of his greeting cards mural to Cleveland. And that's where Graffiti Heart came in and really helped uh, broker that and, and find a wall. And, and we were part of that um, coming to Cleveland. And so we've really been able to leverage that. And, and it's been a great partnership. Um, but fast forward, we've been able to then really work on our own to, to curate, to contract, and to manage projects on our own uh, with, with uh, local artists. So um, youth scholarships in 2015 was our first scholarship that we funded. And uh, the first year or two, we really tried to build, uh, identify potential partners in education. And uh, we finally were able to build a, a nice uh, entry into Cleveland Institute of Art, especially because of their pre-college program, which is for teens, um, allows them a really cool um, social, social experience where they can have room and board for a two week period on the campus, learn campus life, you know, start interacting and socializing in a different way that m most of them have been able to do. And they get a deep immersion of the arts for that two week period. And it also really springboards their potential and their, and their confidence and their opportunities with getting uh, undergrad financial aid as well as um, the confidence to move into uh, an undergrad um, school um, experience. So, so we've, uh, we've just found our first scholarship recipient for the pre-college in 2015, just graduated from undergrad at CIA um, this summer. So uh, full circle, uh, just, just a great uh, experience to watch some of these uh, young aspiring artists um, really change their life. So really excited about that. And then finally, we opened um, our headquarters, which is a Graffiti Heart Gallery Museum. We'll talk a little bit about, which is over on Superior and East 49th. Um, and so we're really excited about that. So when you think about some of our um, youth education uh, impact that we made so far um, because of our funding and we're all grassroots organization. So most of our funding comes from the projects that we commission as well as uh, fundraisers that we hold. Uh, and then we have been fortunate to get some um, small grants from uh, either CAC or uh, Neighborhood Connections, um, but the scholarship funding is purely through our projects and our fundraising. So $83,000 uh, in scholarships over the last few years, um, over 42 teenagers that have gone through the program. Um, and um, that's really been uh, the impetus of, of, of our mission uh, and really is uh, where, the, where the heartstrings are drawn because we can, we can interact with, with these kids and really see their lives change, talk to their parents or the family members. It's, it's pretty cool. And so our next phases in our organization will really be to also allocate some funds so we can do more art programming now that we have a building 
getting through COVID and, and finding ways to do some of our own uh, high touch with some of the kids in the community. Um, some of our notable projects, we've done um, 23 completed public murals. Um, be mindful that many more projects we've done than that inside um, either houses or organizations, <clears throat> a lot of commercial projects. You know, we're working on one with Sherwin Williams. We've, we've done some with <clears throat> uh, many different organizations Air gas is one, but uh, many different organizations where we've done uh, mural projects uh, within their workplaces or homes or office buildings. But these 23 are public. Uh, we did two in Puerto Rico, which is when I first met uh, Cleveland leadership. I think Marianne uh, in San Juan as a quick visit. Uh, we did the two murals in Calle, which is more of the center of the island right after the Hurricane Maria as a gift to that community because one of our board members families from there. Um, and so we were able to um, work with the School of the Arts and um, engage the students there on their own mural, as well as helping with the, the larger mural that we did. Um, we're going to add about 18 or 19 more murals um, in Cleveland in about two weeks, where we have Wordsmith coming to Cleveland. This is a gift to, uh, we'll talk a little bit about this in a few minutes, but this is a gift to the community, to Cleveland, uh, to bring Wordsmith, who's originally from Cleveland, to Cleveland to make his mark. Uh, he's an international artist coming from London, made his way in, uh, in LA is where he really made his debut in, in street art. For those of you um, that are aware of the Hilton Cleveland, uh, they opened in 2015. I think June 1st was their grand opening. And one of their executive suites is the graffiti suite, which was inspired by our organization. So one of the walls in there is the greetings from Cleveland, uh, uh, copywritten print that they had uh, worked with the artists to do that. Uh, and that was really a breakthrough and, and a whole paradigm of bringing a, a graffiti type of art theme in, uh, you know, a high level um, premier hotel like, like the Hilton. So a lot of different things that we've done, the Black Lives Matter mural, uh, especially in the movement um, uh, with all the um, uh, tragedies and, and then the George Floyd uh, murder last year on the heels of that, um, uh, graffiti heart worked in collaboration with Ricky Smith and within a matter of 48 hours made that happen with the partnership of the Cleveland uh, city. So, you know, just things that we try to do where we can um, help, where we can help uh, create connections, activate um, voices of the community as well as the artists. Um, so um, some of these other murals, I didn't name them all, but um, you'll see my background. This is Bo Stanton. So this is actually in our campus at Graffiti Heart. And it's just, um, you know, now it's part of the Cleveland Guardian. So uh, hopefully if you haven't visited it, you come to our compound sometime and, and check it out. Um, national reach. So we were really fortunate to be on the NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt a couple months ago. Uh, they, NBC reached out to Graffiti Heart um, and wanted to do a story on Graffiti Heart nonprofit. So that was really a, a cool exercise to launch uh, one of our uh, mural projects, We Wear the Mask, which is over on Euclid Avenue and East 71st. So you can check that out. Uh, we've been on Upworthy um, and some other uh, really cool um, media, uh, both in the news as well as in print. So uh, we've been really fortunate. Again, this is all grassroots. Nobody has been paid from the organization standpoint other than artists um, and our students, but um, we're looking to, to invest in a staff uh, member over the next 12 to 18 months so that we can really be more sustainable. Here's our, our building um, that was painted by Risk Rock, who, if you don't know Risk Rock, the cool thing about this is that it's like, um, you know, graffiti art form is the last, you know, uh, hand art, medium kind of art form. Uh, and the fact that we have a Risk Rock in Cleveland is truly epic. He's a legend. Uh, he's one of the original uh, graffiti writers in Los Angeles during the movement uh, back in the early 80s. Um, he's known worldwide. Someday, you know, when, when we're long gone, people will say there's a there's a Rembrandt in Cleveland and it this is truly um, an, an amazing piece right here. And uh, it's, it's basically known as part of his beautifully destroyed artwork. Um, if you don't know anything about Risk Rock, look him up, w Wikipedia, his website, everything else. But he's an amazing person. I was just out there and last month, uh, checking out his compound. Um, and he's just an amazing uh, human being and uh, really advocate for the community. 
again, there's uh, the wings. Here's not all of our pieces, but some notable ones. Uh, the Underground Railroad mural we did last year with three artists that um, I picked up from the Black Lives Matter mural. Not, none of them worked together. None of them knew each other. Um, I basically uh, uh, brought them together in a collaboration. Sina Alia was the lead. Uh, they're best friends now and family. Um, but they basically did their research because the Underground Railroad uh, of enslaved people, um, this was a safe place. Um, to, to basically um, land. And so this mural um, is, has a pretty amazing uh, history and story to it um, and can be found over on 90 Willis Street in um, Bedford. But what you'll wanna know is if you go to graffitiheart.org, um, there's actually a mural registry that'll take you and map you to any of the murals that we've done and other organizations and other artists have done. So we try to uh, be inclusive there. So finally, I just want to give you a high level snapshot of Wordsmith. Um, I put the link in the uh, chat box. So um, I think Rachel will share it again. Uh, but we're basically going to be doing murals from August 6th through August 13th um, in and around Cleveland, one in Lakewood, one in Cleveland Heights, and the rest all in between. Um, there's a little bit about Wordsmith, but he is from uh, the Cleveland area, went to Miami of Ohio moved to Chicago. This is basically his palette. He does the typewriter. He is a writer. He's an author. He's a creator. And he basically just fell into street art based on curiosity. And now he does that full time. He's also continues his, his writing. So he continues to be an author, but very inspiring and romantic pieces around the world. And um, a little bit about the tour. It's inspired from the love of the parents that I had. Uh, my dad's 95, but um, my parents born in the 20s were true um, lovers. And this is really an inspiration of, of the love of Cleveland, the love of family, and really kind of bringing it all together. So um, several places, we've got partnerships with the RTA. We're gonna be doing some pieces, Cleveland Institute of Art, uh, Cleveland Metro Parks. Um, we've got uh, pieces in Tower City at RTA, as I mentioned, um, Lakewood and some other places, uh, um, including uh, St. Clair Superior, Gateway District, Warehouse District. So we're really excited about uh, the splash that this is going to bring. It'll be a place-making opportunity. So every day from the 6th through the 13th, uh, you'll be able to follow the tour. It won't be exact times each day, but we'll be you know, doing live social media. I'm taking a vacation so I can actually uh, be uh, involved. I'll be assisting Wordsmith and we'll be at all the locations along with the team of volunteers that are helping us. Um, if you go to the link that Rachel will share, um, it will give you the schedule. Uh, but this will be our big one. Uh, for those of you from Cleveland or who are aware of Michael Stanley, um, there'll be um, a, a Michael Stanley tribute over here in Midtown on Payne Avenue near 26th. Um, and it's it's going to be pretty cool. You're going to be see it, see it from the highway. Hopefully everybody will keep their eyes on the wheel and on the road, but um, pull over and uh, get off the exit and check this thing out. Um, but you'll see um, some cool ones in the neighborhood, including uh, the Greater Collinwood, which this is going to be just a great piece for the community there. Uh, much needed love and, and art, and that community is, is fully embracing and wanting this. And um, this is all being gifted based on our funding. Uh, we have some funding from uh, Cuyahoga Arts and Community um, Culture, but we also, the uh, majority of it is from our donors, our sponsors through our fundraising efforts. So uh, I'm not gonna go through all these, but you'll see that it's gonna be a really cool little tour, uh, a couple pieces on the Red Line Greenway and um, RTA down in the base of the Terminal Tower. Um, also there next to Johnny's, we're going to have one, which will be a great photo shot for you and your date or dates. And uh, over on Euclid Avenue, uh, another Heartland, Campus International School. We've done several projects with them for murals. So we'll do one outside as well as inside the lobby so their students can see that and appreciate that. This is the uh, alleyway between Graffiti Heart and our neighbor, uh, Fisher Jurash, who we did the Guardian mural on. So we're going to cover some bad language and put a wordsmith over that. And uh, there'll be one inside our gallery. So we'll have a certain kind of a passport experience. So if you get so many murals, uh, uh, photos of them, you can get some graffiti heart swag. 
And finally, this one is not approved yet, but uh, we're hoping to do something on Dayglow. And then finally, uh, which is pretty cool, we're gonna do one on CIA, which is gonna be really spectacular. So um, along with that, I know I went fast. There's a lot of stuff. I just wanna give you like a high level, at least um, feel of the organization, what we're all about. Um, hopefully there's some things that were new to you. Hopefully it uh, shared things about Graffiti Heart, which sometimes seems to be a mystery. Sometimes that's intentional because it, 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 it aligns with the vibe of underground graffiti and, um, and just keeping things mysterious and keeping people curious. So I'll pause and, and thank everybody for giving me the time to share our story. I mean, thank you so much. We have had a few questions come in. Um, and actually kind of pulling on the, the last comments you made around kind of the mysteriousness of graffiti. So those who aren't as well versed um, in truly understanding graffiti as an art form, can you talk about the importance of it as a form of art, both for the artists and also for the community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, as I mentioned, it's the last um, hand to, to, to art, to paint, to medium, to surface art form. And I think I think graffiti writing, graffiti uh, art, um, whether it be as we know today, either illegal or legal, depending on how you you know what, what form you're talking about, it's really a fabric of our history, of our culture and our society, um, and it 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 really plays to um, an outlet. Um, for many artists that uh, perhaps um, have been underserved or don't have any ways of expressing themselves. Um, you know, I know there's often a lot of uh, uh, speculation of ties to gangs, which is true, especially, I mean, it's, it's not unilateral, um, um, but I think there is its own culture where there's a code of honor uh, with um, respecting uh, the different crews and respecting the different spaces that they um, mark or, or practice on. I think, and conversely, there's also a code of ethics where a code of code of honor where um, where pieces are painted, even if they're commission pieces, um, that tagging those um, you know can create uh, obviously some conflict. And we saw. We saw an example of that um, over in Clark Avenue when uh, the beautiful mural there was was defaced a few years ago. Um, there was a lot of uh, rumbling uh, from the underground against that act. So you know, it's it's not just um, one way. It, there's actually a protective. We did the some of our pieces are done with graffiti writers. Um, many of them are, and so for instance, the the greetings or the welcome to Tremont mural. You know, often you'll get. Um, clients that are concerned of getting tagged and it's always possible. Um, but we hope that there's a high probability that that won't happen because there is a lot of the underground code. Uh, but I would say going back to your question, um, the history of graffiti and graffiti writing and happened organically and it took off with many different types of art forms that uh, Taki 183 um, really started the writing movement, not necessarily painting art, but writing his name uh, in a street. And, and so graffiti writing in itself kind of took on a, a form that continued to get elaborated with different types of symbols and markings that eventually um, became uh, a thing. So trains and other types of surfaces became an, a public uh, gallery per se. And you can see my gallery go across the country on a train. Um, at the end of August, we are going to be hosting the Boys from the Heights from New York. So Taki 183, Mike 171, uh, Henry and a few other. So the original graffiti writers from New York City uh, from the 60s and 70s. Um, so that's our second uh, final project, large public project for the summer. But you'll be able to actually hear more about the history, what it means, how the movement started, um, and also watch the movie Wall Writers, which you can rent um, also. And, and that'll tell you more about the story itself. How do the projects come together between the communities and the artists and what role do you play in making that happen? Yeah, so um, most of the projects um, come to us directly from either, mostly from um, a private funder or a, a community engagement 
leader or coordinator. And basically, we in most of the projects, um, we, we'll play cradle to grave. So basically, work with them on kind of the scope of what the project is, um, uh, what some of the parameters, um, artist selection. We usually source artists based on who, the project. So if it's a commercial project, meaning it's not a community driven, but it's maybe a corporation driven, um, we typically will identify artists or artists based on that type of uh, the type of piece that they want or the type of work they want. So we oversee it, we contract the artists, um, we provide uh, the contracts, uh, we pay the artists, um, you know, we, we help navigate through any of the approval processes with the city, whether it's in, through design review, planning commissions and such. So we try to be that resource and arm to really help manage from cradle to grave um, for those that either may not have the time or don't know really what steps to take. As you look ahead for the next few years, what's your vision for the organization? Uh, my vision would be, especially since I'm taking on this new role, um, to, to it's time, it's time to, to figure out what the strategy is to fund um, you know, a resource that can really dedicate their focus on um, uh, building out Graffiti Heart, not to be something that we're not, we don't want to be. We really want to continue to be a niche, but, but making sure that we can build out the other elements of funding for our organization. Like I said, the majority of our funding comes from our fundraising and our projects. So building out also the grant um, portion of our portfolio so that we can be more proactive and doing more, um, more projects with regards to youth art programming um, and doing more forward leaning projects. We'd like to bring in one big name a year. So we've had Risk, we've had um, Bo Stanton last year do, doing the Guardian. We're bringing in Wordsmith, we're bringing in the Boys from the Heights. Last year, we were going to bring Black Lorat, who's the godfather of stencil, who actually Banksy is emulated. Um, so Black is from Paris, so he hasn't been, we had to cancel that. So our vision is to continue to be true with our, our mission, but, but be able to be more proactive and forward leaning in some of these programs, especially on the education part, um, but doing that through more dedicated resource. All right, so we do have uh, an interim executive director uh, that we'll be announcing soon um, that will still be somewhat volunteer in a base, but, but to help us kind of move to that next level. Um, I'll still remain as president, be very actively involved, but sometimes from Cleveland, sometimes from Philly. Well, Sammy, we have had um, a couple people in the chat uh, be very interested in getting connected with you. So I will be sure to follow up with that. And we are all very excited for what you've been able to bring to town and what is coming. And we would highly encourage everybody to please check out the murals um, with Wordsmith. I will be sure to share the link to that tour in our follow-up emails also in the chat, as well as a link to Stami's, um, the organization's website. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, there's the opportunity to find the murals on a map. And if you have the opportunity, highly encourage you to visit uh, down on Superior. Uh, the building is amazing. The Bo Stanton mural is amazing. And my son still talks about the green monster that's on the wall heading up the stairs. So highly recommend that you all check it out. And Sami, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your passion for this space. It's, um, you've made a wonderful mark on our community. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks for everyone for taking the time today to hear the story.